Hey there! Welcome back to the Noctus on YouTube. How can a ship stop without brakes? Maybe this question has crossed your mind when you see large ships sailing on the sea. How do they control their speed and direction? And how do they bring their momentum to a halt when arriving at the port or facing emergency situations? Do they have a braking system similar to land vehicles, or do they use a different method? Large ships typically use propeller-driven propulsion systems to generate the necessary thrust for the ship to move through the water. These propellers spin at a speed determined by the connected drive engine at the center axis of the propeller. When the propeller spins, its blades cut through the water, creating different pressures on the front and back sides of the blades. The pressure on the front side of the blade is higher than on the back side due to the difference in the speed of water flow on both sides. This pressure difference generates a thrust force directed backward, pushing the ship forward. In this way, the ship's propeller can convert mechanical energy from the drive engine into kinetic energy from the flow of water, which is then used to propel the ship. The speed and direction of the ship can be controlled by adjusting the speed and angle of rotation of the propeller blades and using a rudder to alter the direction of the water flow. Since ships do not have braking devices like disc brakes or brake pads commonly used in land vehicles, they rely on two main methods to reduce or stop their speed. Propeller reversal and anchors. And there are several ship braking methods involving the use of propeller reversal or not involving propeller reversal, including the steering cycle, full turn, sudden stop, inertia stop, and controlled speed reduction are various methods used in ship braking. The steering cycle is a technique commonly employed to reduce a ship's speed on water. This technique involves moving the ship's rudder left and right alternately, causing the ship to move in a zigzag pattern on the water. The zigzag motion creates friction between the ship's hull and the water, which in turn reduces the ship's speed because this friction opposes the ship's direction of motion. To better understand this principle, imagine you're riding a bicycle. If you want to slow down without using the brakes, you can turn the bike's handlebars left and right, causing the bike to move in a zigzag pattern. This zigzag motion increases the friction between the bike's tires and the road surface, as well as with the air, ultimately reducing your bike speed. The same concept applies to ships on water. The ship's captain can move the rudder left and right to make the ship move in a zigzag pattern, which increases the distance traveled by the ship on the water. This longer distance traveled means the ship will experience greater friction with the water, ultimately reducing its speed. However, the steering cycle cannot bring the ship to a complete stop. The ship still has momentum which is the combination of the ship's mass and speed. This momentum will persist even as the ship slows down. When the rudder is moved, there is an interaction between the ship's hull and the water. For example, when the rudder is moved to the left, the ship's hull will push water on the right side with a certain force. The water will then push back against the ship's hull with an equal but opposite force, causing the ship to turn to the left. During this process, some of the ship's momentum is transferred to the water, reducing the ship's speed. The steering cycle is highly beneficial for gradually reducing a ship's speed, especially when approaching a harbor or busy water area. By using the steering cycle, the captain can better control the ship's speed without relying on the propellers. It also aids in avoiding obstacles or hazards in the water. 
However, there are some drawbacks to the steering cycle. This technique requires a fairly spacious area due to the zigzag pattern created by the ship. If the space is too tight, it can be challenging to execute the steering cycle properly and the ship may collide with objects in its vicinity. Additionally, the process of slowing down using the steering cycle takes longer compared to using the propellers, making it less effective in emergency situations that require quick responses. A full turn is a method to stop the ship quickly in emergency situations, such as when there is a risk of collision. Here, the rudder is used to turn the ship 180 degrees. Just like abruptly turning the steering wheel of a car to make it spin, the ship also rotates and its propellers move in the opposite direction, helping to bring the ship to a halt. A full turn is extremely useful for avoiding collisions or rapidly changing the ship's direction. However, it requires skill on the part of the captain and relatively calm sea conditions. If executed incorrectly, it can damage the ship or even cause it to capsize, especially in rough seas or strong currents. Therefore, a full turn is not the best option in adverse or unstable sea conditions. A sudden stop is a ship braking method that involves using the propellers to generate a backward thrust. This method is typically employed to bring the ship to a rapid halt, especially in emergency situations. By generating a backward thrust, the propellers create a significant resistance force on the ship, drastically reducing its speed. This resistance force is generated by the water flow around the ship, opposing the ship's direction of motion, thus bringing its speed down to zero. Sudden stops are usually used to bring a ship to a rapid halt in emergency situations, such as when there is a collision risk or foreign objects ahead of the ship. By employing a sudden stop, the captain can avoid the potentially catastrophic consequences of collisions or impacts with these objects. Sudden stops can also assist the captain in making drastic changes in the ship's direction if needed. However, sudden stops come with several risks and challenges. One of them is that a sudden stop demands a tremendous amount of power from the ship's engine because the propellers must generate a substantial backward thrust. If the ship's engine is not powerful enough or malfunctions, a sudden stop cannot be executed effectively and the ship may continue moving uncontrollably. Additionally, a sudden stop requires good coordination between the captain and the ship's crew, as the process must be carried out swiftly and accurately. Otherwise, a sudden stop can result in damage to the ship's hull or propellers, or even lead to the ship capsizing. Inertia stop is a ship braking method that involves completely stopping the propellers and the rudder. This method is typically used to gradually bring the ship to a halt over a long distance. By stopping the propellers and the rudder, there is no additional push or extra force applied to the ship, so the ship relies only on its own natural tendency to keep moving or stay still unless something else affects it. The ship will keep moving, but gradually slow down until the forces of friction and resistance eventually bring it to a stop. Controlled speed reduction is a ship braking method that involves gradually reducing the speed of the propellers. This method is usually used to adjust the ship's speed based on the sea conditions, wind, currents, or the destination. Reducing the speed of the propellers decreases the thrust they generate, which results in the ship's speed decreasing as well. This method allows the ship to come to a smoother and more precise stop. However, inertia stop also has some disadvantages. One of them is that it requires a very long distance to bring the ship to a complete stop because the process of slowing down the ship is very slow. 
If the captain needs to stop the ship in a short distance, inertia stop may not provide an effective solution. Therefore, inertia stop is not suitable for use in situations that require a quick and decisive response. Additionally, inertia stop demands a high level of attention from the captain and the ship's crew because the inertia stop process is vulnerable to disturbances from other external forces such as wind, waves or currents. If external forces are at play on the ship during an inertia stop, the total momentum of the system will change, leading to changes in the ship's speed or direction. Therefore, the captain and the ship's crew must always be prepared to take necessary actions if external forces interfere with the inertia stop process. We can see that ships have various methods to come to a stop without breaks. However, there is no one method that fits all situations. It depends on various factors that the captain and the ship's crew must consider. These factors include the ship's mass, shape, size, cargo, sea conditions, wind and currents. All of these factors can influence the ship's speed, direction and stopping distance. Therefore, the captain and the ship's crew must possess good knowledge and skills in physics and navigation to safely and efficiently control the ship. That wraps up today's video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more awesome videos. Catch you in the next one.